Welcome to the Drop the Mic Wrestling Podcast on Tobacco Road Sports Radio and TobaccoRoadSportsRadio.com as part of the Wrestling Wednesday card. I'm your host, Michael Davis. Meanwhile in wrestling, MJF and Adam Cole are the hottest thing in wrestling. LA Knight wants to be, and Bray Wyatt could potentially return to the WWE as soon as next month. My birthday month, as by the way. Uh, today, we welcome back to the show. You've gotten accustomed to him. You've started to love him. Uh, it is your boy, Shannon Smith, right now on Drop the Mic. Shannon, how are you doing today? Man, I feel great. Want to talk some wrestling. A lot of stuff is going on. Some stuff is going to happen. I look forward to talk about it. Of course, and always look forward to having you on the show. Last week, we had you and Ryan Frick. Ryan from Tap Outs and Touchdowns. He was on the show. as a triple threat episode of Drop the Mic, which I don't usually get to do often. That was a lot of fun. We got to um, do that. We we have to do that again. We got to do that again. We got to get Ryan on. We got to get Des Johnson on, the producer yes. of Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Yes. Um, if you have not subscribed, by the way, to the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel, you can catch all the Drop the Mic. You can catch all of our Pocket with Michael Davis live on Fridays. You can catch the Cat Cave, a Carolina Panther podcast I do, and there's several other shows that Desmond puts on and several others to uh, – give you guys the best sports content. Cause we don't really like, I mean, we're not really affiliated with like ESPN or Fox sports. No, no dissing on those guys, but it's like, we can really talk about, you know, whatever. And Des gives me like full creativity when it comes to these shows, putting them together, inviting who I want on. And so it's a, it's a good time. And we, uh we take our sports and our professional wrestling very seriously. We do. Yes, we do. Um, so be sure to subscribe to Drop the Mic on uh, Tobacco Road Sports Radio. Be sure to subscribe to our Instagram as well, at Drop the Mic Wrestling, where you can catch all more content. But, Shan, we got to get right into it right now. Let's um, go. Uh, everybody, excuse me, I'm a little under the weather this week. Uh, should uh, should be back in no time. I know. Hey, that's why we're socially distancing, right? Is there at least six, <laughs> is there at least six feet from us or... Maybe like 26 more. miles or something. Yeah, a little <laughs> more than that. So I think we're good, but who knows? Maybe. Maybe. You might have actually given this to me, but who knows? I don't know. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, he, uh, we're uh, playing some jokes. So if you see myself, uh, you know, mute my mic and cough. If you're watching on the YouTube feed, don't be alarmed. Uh, Shannon is also CPR and first aid certified. So uh, if something happens, he's going to drive you know, 25, 30 minutes over here is going to give me CPR. I'm also CPR and first aid certified. So if Shane doesn't get here in time, I'm my last resort, you know? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what what was really unexpected, um, like me, you know, dropping dead on air. Let's hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, <laughs> was MJF and Adam Cole, baby. Yes. Uh, Shannon... The last few weeks on AEW, and you know, thankfully being in you know this illness, I've had a lot more time to watch some wrestling a little bit, and yeah. so I'm catching up on AEW, and I'm watching this tag team, and we've seen this from MJF and Adam Cole, um, particularly MJF, really, where he'll get a buddy, he'll have a fake friendship with Cody Rhodes or Chris Jericho or Sammy Guevara, and you just wait until MJF turns. And so when they originally paired MJF and Adam Cole together in this blind tag team eliminator tournament, I'm like, uh, Shannon, like we've seen this one too many times. I love MJF. I love Adam Cole, but I, it's just going to be disingenuous. We know this is just going to lead to a world title match. And then watching these segments, They've actually got me believing. They've got the fans adoring this tag team. And now they're going to compete for the AEW World Tag Team titles against FTR this Saturday at Collision. And so now I'm starting to have the question, I don't know if you go into the immediate world title match with Adam Cole and MJF at like all in or all out. Or if you like see how far you can ride this tag team train, uh, because they might be better than a lot of the tag teams, and you know it, baby. Yeah, 
<laughs> you know, looking at these two together and all the chemistry that they've had, you know, the dance off was cool. Um, the segment where they were playing video games together and just at them, they, they were legit friends. I mean, which was which was cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I thought it was really cool, you know, with, with how they're doing this and how they're carrying this out. But if I were AEW, I would drag this out a little longer. The reason for that is because this helps the tag team division get stronger. Now, FTR needs a legit tag team in order to show how great of a tag team they really are. Now, let's let's all be honest here. FTR is, I would say, the best tag team in all of wrestling. Facts. I should have worn my FTR shirt. I wore a Brad yeah. Attitude shirt, though. Shout out. There Brad. you go, Brad Attitude. Hey, that's cool. That's cool. But, I mean, FTR is the best tag team in all of wrestling. I, you you got to say it. I mean, there there's debates on it, but I would have to say that FTR right now, they're the most popular and they're the best tag team out there. And they need a tag team that is strong and legit to show their supremacy as the best tag team in all of wrestling. What better way than to have this very over heel and a very over face join forces together in order to boost FTR? Because that's what I think is going on here. I think that Tony Khan is seeing that and they need competition. No disrespect to anybody else. <clears throat> You're passing it on to me, but no disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect at all to the other tag teams out there. But I really think that it's going to benefit the tag team division and benefit MJF because we all know the turn is going to happen. We know MJF is a snake. He, he's done this before. This song has been played many times, but. Of these guys that he's tagged with, this one with him and Adam Cole is probably the most entertaining. Oh, yeah. It's worth the most, and it's going well, and it's organic. It's not forced. So that's the reason why this is going so well, because they're legit looking like they're having a great time doing this. It's not one of those things where they're kind of looking at each other like, well, I guess we're going to do this. I guess I'll like you for a couple of weeks, and then after that, I'm going to stab you in the back. But no, they're legit looking great together. And it's fun and it's a great turn for the crowd. And, you know, it's great for fans. It's working. But we know the turn's going to come and then it's going to get serious. And then Adam Cole is going to get a title shot. We know. But for the time being, enjoy it. Dude, enjoy it. Like, and AW is, you know, very adamant about being a professional wrestling company. Yes. And, it feels like this MJF and Adam Cole, especially the uh, bro hangout sessions. Right. Um, that sounds very WWE. I don't know it if does. you remember, it like, does. Daniel Bryan and Kane, Team Hell yeah. No. They would be sent to these therapy sessions. They'd be sent <laughs> to restaurants. Um, I was actually wat watching some of those clips just because this reminded me so much of it. Yes. I was like, man, MJF and Adam Cole are like taking this, but making it so much better than they really do. I'm very impressed with how they've grasped onto sports entertainment with Adam Cole. You know, he was awesome in NXT. MJF keeps teasing a WWE move in 2024, the bidding war, uh, the bidding war of 2024. Yeah. Um, but seeing them work together in this sports entertainment kind of capacity and get it over as well dude they're getting very basic moves over body slam yeah double clothesline yeah oh, Tope suicida that was great i love the double clothesline between them two it was awesome like they're getting just the most simple stuff over um the video game that you mentioned yeah. earlier like yeah there was a promo uh mjf did you know a few years ago he's like you know I love video games. And he starts a video games chant. And then he's like, till I lost my virginity. <laughs> and then, and I, I will say the person, the camera crew cut to in the crowd after he said that we're so wrong for it. Yes. But it was so funny. It was so funny. And now you got Adam Cole playing games with MJF. Exactly. MJF doesn't want to, 
But then MJF always, like, when he's, like, being buddy-buddy with people, he did this with CM Punk as he was luring him in. MJF yep. shows, like, an insecurity from his childhood. <laughs> if you notice that, MJF was like, you know, CM Punk was his hero, his his favorite wrestler and everything. Yep. And when they're playing video games, MJF and I'm Cole, it's like, MJF's like, I could play a multiplayer if I had any friends. And that's where Adam Cole gets sucked. Like, this is so, this is so layered and it's so good. It's working. I mean, for real, there, you take a guy that's a polar opposite, the, the snotty rich kid playing with the, with the kid that has the normal life. He has that normal, uh, he has that normal life where, you know, mom and dad, you know, are middle class citizens and you know he's becoming friends with the snotty kid that everybody kind of hates that everybody can't stand but he's giving them a chance and he's like look man you know there's more to life than this there's more to life than what you got enjoy this stuff you know and he's and he's introducing them to new things it's kind of one of those things he's introducing them to new things you know he's taking time with it and he's starting to see that you know he's not what he makes himself out to be he's overcompensating a little bit and and now he's going to show him look this is where you're falling short this is where you're messing up this this is this is what you're doing wrong and let me help you with that then yeah. of course he's going to become he's going to become that jerk again i don't need you i'm better than you and you know it yeah here we and go this, and this gives off you know we mentioned you know daniel bryan kane this also gives like Luke Harper, Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton vibes. Yes. Or honestly, dare I even say Bloodline vibes. I mean, Bloodline very recently, you know, you had your honorary Oos. You had Sami Zayn. Jey yep. Uso, very critical about Sami. Didn't very believe in him. And now with this storyline, they've involved Roderick Strong. Roderick Strong hasn't had anything sink his teeth into and now he's like, you can't really be buying into MJF right now. Right. And one of the things with like Sami Zayn too, Sammy was only supposed to be in the bloodline for what, two, three weeks. And it mm -hmm. got over with the crowd. So they extended it for months and it helped define everyone in the bloodline. They could very well do this with MJF and Adam Cole. If they're smart, if AEW was smart, they will strike while the iron is hot. Once again, you bought this up from last week. Tony Khan is one of those people that listens to his fans, listens to what the fans have to say. If the fans are liking it, he'll continue it. And I think that he will, I think he sees this. And he's like, you know, this is getting better than what we thought. I think that they thought it was a good idea at first, but then it turned into a great idea. And it was like, Y'all, we might need to keep this going. We we are getting a lot of fanfare. Fans are loving this. You know, it's it's smart and and it's a great idea. This this is better than what we thought it was. So we got to do this. Yeah. So I, that's what he's gonna do. I don't know if the necessarily the right move would be to have them beat such a solid tag team in FTR, ah. or if there's a way to have them lose, but now are chasing the tag titles again because they were wronged. Like there could be so many directions they go with this. So let's just hope that Saturday at collision isn't the end of MJF and Adam Cole. And I'll have to watch you on uh replay because I'll be at a Darius Rucker concert. But your uh, fans are really behind MJF and Adam Cole. But on on the other side, you know, we're going from Jacksonville, Florida, all the way to Stanford, Connecticut, because fans are really behind the one and only. L A Knight. Yeah. So so let let me talk to you. Uh LA Knight, you know, was one of the favorites to win the money in the bank. Yes. Then he was one of the favorites to win the fail four-way match to go on and try to challenge Austin Theory for the United States title. And then neither of those happened. LA Knight couldn't even win the qualifier. Rey Mysterio did of all people. And now Rey Mysterio is facing Santos Escobar. Fans are genuinely upset. Chen, everything I'm seeing on social media is fans just angry about LA Knight, quote unquote, getting buried and not winning matches and 
WWE won't push them. Uh, what what are your thoughts? Should fans be angry with how LA Knight's being used or treated in WWE right now? Not so fast, my friends. We're gonna we're gonna be fine. Now, <clears throat> from what I've been hearing, is that the reason for the delayed LA Knight push is because, of course, channeling Eli Drake from years past. He's had a little trouble in the locker room from what is being said. The locker room politics has been what's kind of delayed the L.A. night push. Now, what Triple H is talking about and what he's been thinking and culminating is that the L.A. night push may begin at SummerSlam. Now, they're also saying that there's a possibility that that a uh, qualifying match for the United States title could become a triple threat match. It could. Nothing said and nothing is confirmed, but it could happen. So I don't think all hope is lost yet for LA Knight. I don't think it is. It's one of those things, you know, and Triple H even teased it. He said, good things come to those who wait. Now, we talked about this before. We don't want L.A. Knight to turn into Rusev or turn into Mr. Kennedy. That that what if champion, that what if push, what if they would have pushed Mr. Kennedy? What if they would have pushed Rusev when he was hot? What if they would? What if they don't push L.A. Knight? I really think that this L.A. Knight thing is not over yet. I don't think so. Even though he's losing matches, he still has momentum with the fans. And the thing that I like about it is that they're not force feeding him to the fans. They're not putting him on. They're not throwing. They're not throwing LA Knight everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Like you know, they did Cena a few years back. His, and I was thinking about it. You know, before we went on the air, he reminds me a lot of Daniel Bryan's push in the WWE. So, because- are you saying? Not the yes movement, but the yeah movement. There you go. Yes. I think that's what is happening because it's n- LA Knight came in and then all of a sudden the fans started kind of starting that slow clap. Like they started having a slow clap and then all of a sudden they started gaining momentum and everybody just started cheering. Like when LA Knight comes out, fans are legit hollering. They're loving this dude, and he is like giving it back with his promos, and he's doing so good, and they're in he's catching fire, and it's great. But the thing about it is with me is that I think that Triple H and them are kind of wanting to see more in the ring with him, wanting to see more of his in-ring prowess, because we all we all know the man can talk. We know the man can sell a match, the man can sell himself. But the but it's an organic feel to it. This isn't just some some face push that everyone is like, ah, I guess we'll clap for this guy. Nah, I guess we will. And he's all right. No, they're legit having a fit over him and they're loving what he's doing. So it, it's it's not fake. These fans are loving him. And he's gonna get what he's he's gonna get it. His time is coming. Dude, I re- I really think so slash i want it to be so but fans are and i I love you guys because i know the ones listening either are fans of me fans of shen or fans of wrestling but come on like i heard the same stuff about cody rhodes like when he lost to roman reigns at wrestlemania and it's like guys there's a bigger story to be told now granted there's probably an avenue for cody to actually get pushed and LA Knight's kind of just like floating in thin air right now. Uh, but who knows what happens there at SummerSlam? It's going to be interesting to see. I really think, I don't think that they're or that WWE is going to mess this up. I don't think they are. I hope not. The history has proven that they've done it, but also history proved that they haven't done it. Because Daniel Bryan ended up getting his WrestleMania moment and his time in the sun. But a lot of people forget that. They're they're so busy looking at LA Knight being Rusev, Mr. Kennedy, and all these guys. But you forget about when they actually gave a push to a legit underdog, to a legit overface. They forgot Kofi, that. Kofi Kingston as well. Right. 
the, the thing with Kofi that got me right there is that, you know, it fizzled so quickly. It's like they gave him the title and they're like, okay, do next. Nothing? No? Well, okay, okay. Not not to get on a side tangent here, but A, they should not have had Brock Lesnar squash him the way no. they did. He didn't deserve um, that. I, I, I want to just point out that, you know, not trying to make this a race issue or whatever, but all the African-American WWE champions have lost their title to Brock Lesnar. And it's odd. And it's really, really weird. <laughs> what is going on here? Like, what do, what do we do here? Is, is, is there something you're not telling us? It's like a Vince McMahon thing. You know, Vince McMahon back in 06, 07 with the do-rag Vince. Yeah. Um, just saying out-of-pocket stuff or whatever. But it's like, okay, Kofi, there wasn't a lot to his reign that was very memorable. No. I don't think it was working. Bobby no. Lashley, when he was WWE champion, was working. Yes. Um, so I'm hoping once LA Knight gets his push, and you mentioned it, they're not shoving him down our throats right now. Right. What if they push LA Knight and then the fans start to turn on him? That's Grant, the thing. I, what I, they think did. I, I think LA Knight could be a good heel. But but right now, no. Right now, yeah. it would it would be it would be criminal to turn the man heel after he's gained so much momentum. And it's an organic push. It's not mm -hmm. it, like again, it's it's something that the the fans and the crowds put together themselves. It, they pretty much like the whole crowd went pretty much said, We're going in on this guy because this guy's got a little something. This guy has a little mm -hmm. something. Don't know what it is, but he's got something and it's worked ever since January. Like when they when when LA Knight was starting to be featured a little more, there were more people getting behind him and it kept going. And when the fan vote came in for money in the bank, people were sitting here like, Y'all actually like his dude? Uh oh. Whoa, whoa. All right, y'all. Hold on. Uh, what are we going to do, guys? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Uh, all right, cool. Damian Priest is going to win it. Ready, break. What? No. No. Which, no disrespect to Damian Priest. I think that there's something brewing there, and it's a good idea. But I think that L.A. Knight is not done yet. He's not. It's not over yet. Let's chill. I know the fans are antsy. I get it. But let's chill, y'all. Let's chill. Well, and one of those guys who, like, come to mind with, like, okay, they missed their shot was Braun Strowman. Do you remember back when Strowman got hot around 2017, 2018? Yes. There was that little burst where it was, like, Braun should have had the title strapped onto him. He was right. tipping over ambulances and everything. Yes. They kept it on Lesnar. They kept mm -hmm. it centered around Lesnar and Roman Reigns. And that killed Braun Strowman's momentum to where when he won it as Roman's replacement at the COVID mania, fans were like, eh, okay. Like, you yeah, messed the boat. Yeah. That could easily happen here. It can. And, I mean, not saying that it can't. Because it can. I mean, once again, we oh, that's what I've been saying for the past couple of episodes. Strike while the iron is hot. And they got to do that. And they got to do it. I mean, for real, because LA Knight is is doing great stuff out there. And, you know, that U.S. title is getting stale as could be. Why in the world do you think that they're going to put Fatal Four Ways in all these tournaments just to get a shot at Austin Theory when everyone kind of is thinking that this title is going stale, that his title reign is going bad? No disrespect to him yet again. Like you said the last show, it's kind of not fair that Austin Theory is getting heat. And he's held the title for, for a while. He's held the title for the longest time of a United States champion in the past couple of years. And he's won some marquee matches. So there's mm -hmm. no need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. But considering the fact that he's just been dormant and nothing's been going on with him, I get it. He's on SmackDown with Roman Reigns and the Bloodline. It's a big part that's of it, beat. and that's hard to beat. And, and I get it; it's it's hard to beat. But at the end of the day, it's one of those things. Like you know, the you, the United States title is a title that's really just sat there for the past couple of months. It's just sat there, and you're just like, it's that's not cool. 
that, that's not the way to be. When the women's tag team championship changed hands and mm-hmm. the United title hadn't even been defended, except for that one little squash match it looked like that he had with Sheamus, that's kind of that's kind of a hard pill to swallow. You know, I mean, and, and Austin Theory's not a bad champion. He's not bad. He's not good, but he's not bad. You know, you didn't just put the United States title on um for example, you didn't put it on Gilbert, you know, so like that, you know, God, you could do you there there are worse champions than than Austin Theory. There are worse United States champions. There's worse champions, period. So yeah. it's not you put a champion on a bad guy. It's just he's had nothing to do. Yeah, and especially you brought it up like Roman Reigns, the bloodline, SmackDown. It's hard to get time. Like right. Usually half the show is dedicated to the bloodline just because not really shoving it down our throats. It's like they've earned that time. They have a stranglehold on the business that Roman mentioned in his WrestleMania press conference. He's like, I dare somebody take it from us. LA Knight and the Yeah movement, they're trying to take time. Austin Theory United States title just hasn't gotten that time. Um, right. But you mentioned LA Knight could have won money in the bank. They put it on Damian Priest. You didn't like that idea. But Judgment Day has been one of the big talking points here in the last week. Dominic Mysterio actually making history, the first ever wrestler to main event Raw, NXT, and SmackDown the same week. Last week won the NXT North American title. And now, now he's he's just he's probably the hottest heel in all of wrestling right now. Uh, be. Especially with MJF getting cheers, Roman yeah. Reigns even getting cheers. Like Dominic Mysterio is the one guy you know as soon as he raises the mic up to his mouth, boo. where it's it's a boo it's a boo fest. Um, <laughs> so, Shan, I'm I'm like I'm really frustrated because that meant that the draft split meant nothing at all. That Dominic Mysterio could show up on Raw, NXT, and SmackDown. But at the same time, it's like Dominic now has a title. Rhea has a title. Balor's contending for a title. Priest has the money in the bank. Like, There's a lot of good things to look for when it comes to the Judgment Day. What do you think at first about Dominic main event in all three shows last week? Who would have thought that that was going to happen? If you would have told me a couple years before that this would happen to Dominic Mysterio, I would have said, nah. Nah, nah. No. But it did. Now, let me tell you this here. So, of course, there are people that, and I think you bought this up, is either you or Ryan that bought this up, that, there are some fans that are not buying Dominic Mysterio because he was put on the main roster. He didn't have an NXT run. He didn't have the push from the bottom to the top like some wrestlers have. But when Dom went back and won the North American uh, Championship, that might have been a you want sub. Okay, cool. He didn't have an NXT run. All right, cool. He wins an NXT title. They did the right thing, I believe. They didn't put the U.S. title or the Intercontinental title on him, which was smart. They didn't give him a big title. They gave him, you know, kind of a minor title. They Secondary started, title. Right. You know, they, they started him out. You know, they let him get a smaller I think they're really getting behind him. I really think that the company is looking at, okay, we've got a really, really despised heel. We have to ca- we have to capitalize on this. And they put the North American title on him. I think it was a good move. Now, we can talk about this brand split being whack all day long, and it is. But in this case, they got it right. I think in this case, they got it right. Because... Now, if they want to get it completely right, probably have Dom stay in NXT and hold his own with that title instead of keeping him on the main roster. Having somebody from um, having to make you know the 
the appearances on SmackDown with Judgment Day and things of that nature is a pretty good idea. Now, look at what we've got going on here. You've got Bobby Lashley going and going and trying to recruit from the Hurt Business in NXT. You've got that going on. Maybe I, I'm not really liking the fact that the brand split is kind of seeming a little pointless. Very but pointless. But they're kind of using it to their advantage by having Bobby Lashley come on and uh, look for guys with a hurt business, having Dom go to NXT and win in a title against NXT guys, wrestling NXT uh, wrestlers. It's a little far off, but it just might work. It just might work. You might be far off on that one. Give it some time, man, for real, because you, you you hear you hear the crap. Okay, this is one thing that I can't stand about wrestling critics and and the and the internet wrestling community is that they cannot be satisfied. You get mad at Dominic Mysterio for not going to NXT, for not making his bones, and what does he do? He goes to NXT, he wins a title, and you can't. Uh, uh, you get mad at this stuff. You want this stuff. No, I don't. But then it happens, and you're no, I not. Don't not happy and you're not it makes me sick man i'm sitting here like what do you want they didn't put the world title on him be quiet you didn't put over other people you didn't put him over la night chill so you want to sit back here and talk junk about this the internet wrestling community you want to talk junk about this but yet there's strides being made right now what do you want you want to write the script and blow it Sounds good to me. The bloodline would have been gone in January if that would have happened. And what would we have gotten? Nothing. You would have, you get mad at AEW. You put two impressionable you took you put two impressionable youth together in a tag team, and you get results. You get mad because of the stale product that AEW was putting out. What do you do? You put these two young guys and Adam Cole and MJF together, and it's working. Is there anything else right now that you want to gripe about that's working? Come on, throw these guys a bone. Give these young guys a chance. You sit back. This is why this is why you're gonna kill the sport. You're gonna kill it. You mess around some more, you're gonna kill the sport. You don't want that to their back. Stop tripping. You don't want that. <laughs> why don't does it always it. circle back to I'm you don't want the attitude to their back? I'm telling you, they do not want this back because it's not gonna work. Punk winning the championship, not going to work. Stop it. It's not going to happen. Leave Punk out of this because Punk is done. Yeah, I said it. He's done. D-U-N, done. He's back. He's not back. He's not going to come back. They're not going to raise him up. He's, it's not going to happen. He's going to be a stepping stone for these young guys, and you're going to like it. It's very interesting. Uh, Wilk, Wilk's guy trying to spell done. Uh, I had but, to do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, that's the that's the where where'd you go? Central. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. yeah, that explains it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but here's the here's the issue: is Dominic Mysterio three years ago? Yeah, he should have wrestled at SummerSlam against Seth and then been demoted to NXT. Once you saw, he didn't have a lot of charisma on the mic he didn't have a lot of his ring skills refined but then you put him with judgment day and, it and it's worked. and it's working and it's working so so why would you send him down to nxt have him win the north american title disregard the blank brand split like that's not getting the best of both worlds where fans want him in nxt He's just a raw superstar with an NXT title and I into the rain wrestling. It would have made more sense though, Shannon, if you were going to give him to NXT, have him take the title off Carmelo Hayes, Not take yet. the NXT title, and at least there, Damian Priest is, you know, teasing a cash in. Not, like, yet. Not that, yet. That's 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 the very least you could have done. Now you'll kill uh, Carmelo. Now he's going to the hurt business. He's going to the Hurt Business. He's going to the Hurt Business. I mean, they have to put somebody like a young, impressionable guy in the Hurt Business that can actually be on the microphone. 
you got to do that because Bobby Lashley is stale. He, he's like, like Dude, Ryan, Shannon, ahead. they what? missed it. They what? missed it. What they missed. I just had, I just had the biggest epiphany. And while I usually have brain farts, I have epiphany right now. Let's see this. They could have so had Dominic Mysterio beat Carmelo Hayes instead of Wesley. Dominic goes to NXT, challenges Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo only has Trick backing him up, but Dom has Rhea, Priest, Baller. If they all help Dominic upset Carmelo Hayes, A, that gives Dominic Mysterio a lot more heat, and B, that gives Carmelo a reason to accept this Hurt Business offer. Then you have Hurt Business on SmackDown, Judgment Day on Raw. You start building up to November's pay-per-view of Survivor Series, and you have that cross-branded rivalry. They missed the boat. You know what? They missed it. You're right. That's not a bad idea. Although I despise, like, you know, although I don't like Carmelo, uh, Carmelo Hayes losing the NXT title like that, that's a good idea. I do like the idea. I do like it. You said but I was what? You're right, man. You're right. You're right. I'll give you that. You're right. But still, Carmelo Hayes is going to the Hurt Business. He's going to the Hurt Business, man, because I like him on the microphone. I think that he will be beneficial because he's young, number one. And he's kind of going in there, you know, with the Street Profits as well, too. These younger guys helping Bobby Lashley out is going to be better. Is going to be good for him. And it's kind of going to make Bobby Lashley kind of like the 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 old the elder statesman of the group, which I think is a good idea for Bobby Lashley. I think it's a great idea. I think somebody like Carmelo Hayes could really give a young feel to the Hurt Business, and it would be a very smart idea to do. Now, Dom may come on his own very, very soon now with his own title. He will come on his own real soon. And he might be the next guy in line to, to the lead Judgment Day with this whole thing with Dane Priest mm -hmm. and Finn Balor goes into fruition. Dom could be the leader now, although that's far off right now, but it's a possibility. So there's let these young guys do their thing. Let them let these young guys be these young guys and stop holding them back. I can't and, stand that mess. And Desmond's brought this up too of like you know, factions back in the nineties was made to build up stars. Absolutely. You had the rock come from the nation of domination. You, you had, you had these factions that were built in for getting these lower mid card guys to that next level. As you pair evolution, Randy Orton and Batista prime example right there. <laughs> like, like you have these guys, Dominic can be that guy for judgment day. Even Damian priest, with this Money in the Bank briefcase. Uh, Montez Ford, Carmelo Hayes can be that guy for the Hurt Business. Yeah. Like, yeah. And you don't have to completely bury Bobby Lashley. No. Lashley can still compete for world titles. He still can. Make this an egotistical kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, it, it, this can work if you let it alone. If you let these guys go out here and perform. Mm-hmm. Let them be themselves. Let them go out there and let them perform and let us as the fans choose. Now, when we're talking about factions, they always have an expiration date, whether we like it or not. Yes. And do you think that's what they're teasing with Damian Priest and Finn Balor right now with of course. Damian Priest being money in the bank and Balor competing for the world heavyweight title? Why not? I mean, why not? Because you've got the the story set up with um, Seth Rollins and Finn Balor is right on time. Because Finn Balor feels like he was dealt a bad hand when he had to give up the Universal Championship. And he was. And he was. Injury, it, it sucks. That's a part of life. That's a part of the game. And I hate it more than anything because I was very excited to see Finn Balor win that championship. And then he had to forfeit it because of his injuries. And that sucks. You know, it does. But Seth Rollins coming on and getting that title in his absence 
And here we are again, same story, different premise in a way. And Finn Balor is like, the odds are in my favor. This is supposed to be what's supposed to happen to me. Me winning this title, it belongs to me because I never lost it. And that's awesome. And I like that. I like it 250%. It's amazing. Then you've got Damian Priest out of nowhere winning money in the bank. And, of course, he kind of feels like he's observing that match. And Finn Balor loses, of course. And you got this dissension. You've got this, what's going to happen? Who's going to do what? Will Finn Balor win the title? And if he wins the title, will will Damian Priest take cash in money in the bank? Or if Seth Rollins wins the match, is Damian Priest going to come out there, take the title from Seth Rollins? And what's going to happen between him and Finn Balor? It's the perfect storm. Or Option C, Balor win the World of Heavyweight title at SummerSlam. And then you have weeks of Monday Night Raw with Priest looking over Balor's shoulder. Like you have it right here. It's the perfect storm. It's the perfect storm. I, I, I mean, in my heart of hearts, you know, of course, the title is going, it's going to come down to, I believe, Finn and Damian Priest. I really think it's going to come down to it. It's going to have to. And... A choice is going to have to be made between Rhea and Dom. They're going to have to choose. Who are they going with? Well, you could also make the argument that Rhea and Dom could split away and be their own thing. True. Because I think they both need each other right now. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. think they need Priest or Balor. Nah, they're going to they're gonna battle it out. And I think that that's going to be good because it's going to set up Damian Priest. I believe is going to set him up. And of course it's going to give Finn a good uh, rivalry as well too. And if by chance Finn doesn't win the championship and Damian Priest cashes in and wins the championship, it might be for the rights of judgment day. Could be. This is Edge's fault. I blame Edge for this. I blame Edge. Don't you blame one of the greatest no, I wrestlers blame it. Wait, of I blame all it in, time. I blame it in a good way. I blame it in a good way. This is all a product of Edge. And I like it. I love Edge. I, I like it, man. Don't trash on my Canadian term, no. North Carolinian. No, not at Never all. Never on drop the mic. No, 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 no. I, I say that in a good way, you know, because I love Edge as well, too. Love I, I grew up with Edge. <laughs> I grew up with Edge. I grew up with Edge. I grew up with Edge with the trench coat that, that didn't fit him. In the pseudo vampire, the brood, and the big <laughs> those of flash photography reeks of awesomeness. Yes, I grew up with all that. I grew up with Edge Christian, all that stuff right there. I love it seeing Edge. And I hope to God that you know they kind of push prolonged Edge's farewell tour. I, I kind of hope they do because I'm like, man, you know, I ain't ready to see Edge go again, it's rough. It's rough because my like, God, God, wow. Dude, we had a great moment with his Royal Rumble return. Exactly. It was incredible. Like, exactly. Right before the world ended too, like perfect time in there. Grant, he didn't have a WrestleMania like in front of a crowd, but hot take might be out of pocket. If this was a Friday live at four, <laughs> by the way. Uh, with yours truly on Tobacco Road Sports Radio and WWBG 1470 AM. It's part of your TGI Friday lineup. Cheap plug right there. Orton and Edge had a great match at that COVID mania. Everybody says it was too long and whatever. But no. for what it was, the last man standing match, the, yes. the storytelling that Edge had at that point of his career after acting and everything, us- utilizing the entire performance center, Ending mm-hmm. the way it did on the production truck with the concerto. It was that, cool. It was that's cool. one of my favorite Edge matches now. Yes, the concerto, man, because that was one of Edge's signatures, the concerto. I, I love it. I mean, I feel like if people went back and watched that match, understand the whole dynamic and everything, they'd been like, oh, this was actually really great by Edge and Randy Orton. They were two professionals. Oh, man, they worked real well. Two great workers, and they were very, very good workers together, which mm-hmm. is what 
makes it good because you know what what needs to be understood about wrestling is that wrestling is about making the other guy look better than you in certain in certain aspects you benefit if you make that guy look better than you Mm-hmm. You benefit from that, you know. This is why Ric Flair is regarded as one of the greatest of all time because Ric Flair made you think that you was really killing that man in the ring, and it worked so well to your advantage, but it also worked well to his advantage as well too. Jerry Maguire said the best: "Help me, help you, help you." And that absolutely, and it's doing it because if you beat somebody, you know, you just be right the whole time. Oh, cool. Good win for you, right? What right. if they beat you? What does that make you like that's why you know I'm wearing a bright attitude shirt? He works for AML Wrestling, he's their champion right now. He'll always be posting on Facebook and social media, like right. little four minute promos on his opponents. And he like he never like calls them a bad wrestler. He'll like usually hype them up, but they'll make fun of like where they're from or you know. <laughs> make fun of the town he's about to go in or right. make fun of their name, whatever. But he never like doubts their like professional wrestling ability. And that's cool. And that's and very, he's and good it. at it. Yes. Um, so shout out to Brad right there. Uh, Shant, we only have a few more minutes left here on the drop the mic wrestling podcast. As part of your wrestling Wednesday card, we've talked about MJF and Adam Cole being better than you, baby. We talked about LA Knight and the internet wrestling community. We talked about judgment day. Now, I'd be remiss without ending this episode without saying that Finn Balor does have a chance to go up against Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title at SummerSlam. And they've been advertising these shows as like having multiple main events, even though there's only one main event usually. But it we got a triple header, yes. you know, and the triple header includes trilogies, right? Um, we got Balor and Rollins. It's their third match against each other. Uh, their first match, obviously, come in SummerSlam 2016. We referenced that a few minutes ago where Balor beat Rollins but had to forfeit the Universal title 24 hours later. You have Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. The score is tied 1-1 to one right now after this summer, and we're getting that match. And then, obviously, we have Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. Roman and Jey had their first two matches in the Thunderdome in front of no fans and the emotional storytelling they had in those matches was pretty incredible. But there's a rumor speculating that's kind of overseeding all three of these major matchups that the one and only Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt, could return during one of the big main events, during SummerSlam, during what I've been calling the Summer of Trilogies whether it's Reigns, Uso, Lesnar, Rhodes, Balor, Rollins. Bray Wyatt was making noise last year around this time as we were following the right rabbit. And Mm -hmm. now it's, you know, Mm -hmm. making his way around that he might be healthy enough for a return. What do you expect uh, from this Bray Wyatt rumor? Is there anything to make of it? I think he'll be back. And I think he's going to be back after Cody and Brock Lesnar. I think that's going to be the next chapter for Cody. Cody is going to have a run with a good bit of superstars. I don't want to say that Ryan Frick is correct, but I think they're on to something by putting all these stumbling blocks in front of Cody. I think they really are. And it's making Cody more relevant. Now, do I think that it's going to be another mania with Cody and um, Roman Reigns? I hope. With with this happening now, I really, really hope so. Because they're throwing, okay, they threw Brock Lesnar out of nowhere and everybody's kind of scratching their heads like, why in the world is Brock Lesnar just beating the tar out of Cody? Like this, yes, I know that I said in the past that Vince McMahon and one Paul Levesque, a.k.a. Hunter Hearst Helmsley, are very petty individuals and wanted Cody to get his butt kicked. And, of course, with the wonderful impersonation of Vince McMahon that you did a few a few episodes back that had made me laugh. It was such good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I love it. 
I love it. And when and when Des talked about, you know, Triple H is going to say, yeah, it was me the whole <laughs> time doing this. And, and I think that that is going to be another part of that. There might be something that Ryan is on to about them building up Cody. If they're going to throw – they're going to throw Brock Lesnar at him. Then they're going to throw Bray Wyatt at him. And that Bray Wyatt story would be amazing. And I do hope to see another kind of spin of the Wyatt family somehow, some way. I kind of want to see that. I, I'm i not going to lie to you. I was not a fan of Bray Wyatt beforehand when he was white hot. And I was so wrong for that. I was not really a fan of him. I didn't hate him, but I was just kind of like, eh, whatever, dude. But I feel, I, and I feel bad for that. I feel bad because going back on a lot of those promos that he cut, they were great. And I'm like, man, why did I not like this dude again? What was dude. I thinking? Like seeing his stuff in NXT with Rowan and Harper, um, RIP Luke Harper, been thinking about right. him a lot here the last couple of weeks. I um, hate and I mean, man. You know, his son, seeing the son, you know, mm -hmm. AW, you know, that that really makes me happy that they're you know, helping his son through this as well, too, by giving them per giving them spots in AEW as well, too, giving them a spot. You know, it, it, I, I like that so much, man. Yeah. That's AEW is doing something right there. Um, yeah. But with Bray, it's like, dude, he he could come back and. Like any of these matches make sense. Byler Rollins, I mean, I don't think Seth wants to work with Bray again. No. Nah. Uh, Roman Reigns, Jey Uso. Bray was the guy, you know, who was at SummerSlam four years, three, four years ago during COVID Mania and was the last, you know, universal champion, you know, before Roman's historic reign Very started a uh, week after SummerSlam. And then, you know, you have Lesnar Rhodes. And I agree with you. If you want to elevate Bray, if you want to elevate Cody even more, have Bray Wyatt come back out. Have Ray, have Cody beat Lesnar. Have Cody win that trilogy. But at the very end, that stumbling block right there is Bray Wyatt. And this could honestly, like, I feel like fans have wanted to give up on Bray I because so. they haven't seen a lot from him out this year. And, and, Looking over 12 months, he hasn't done much, you know, right. whether it be health, whether it be creative, whether it be mental. Um, he's been through a lot in the last couple of years, especially yeah. when we mention Luke Harper, Brody Lee, and you know, he's also lost a couple best friends close right. to him as well. Um, I'm really excited to see Bray get back to what he does best mm -hmm. and seeing a three month feud with Cody Rhodes leading into Survivor Series. Like that. I'm, I'm telling you, that that's the way to go. That sounds like a, a great idea. That's gonna be a good. I, but they gotta give the fire. They gotta give Bray Wyatt the, the fire. The, the Firefly. They have to do that one. The Fiend. I'm okay with. The Fiend is cool. I like the Fiend, but that that old school Bray Wyatt of you know, the Fireflies. And when they turn them, when when Cody, if Cody wins that match with Brock Lesnar, and those lights come out, those lights go off, and next thing you know, all the Fireflies come out. You see Bray Wyatt carrying that lantern. I'd love that. I'd love it, man. I'd have you know how much of a fit that crowd would throw. Yeah. Oh man, all the fireflies coming out. Woo -hoo. That would, I, hey, everybody talks trash about Bray, the IWC, whatever, but everybody would be holding out their flashlights right there for your yeah. Firefly Funhouse. But oh, my man. uh, my dog's giving me the cue right now. Uh, take her out and that's going to be the uh, wrap up of our drop the mic wrestling podcast episode with Shane Smith. Now you can go subscribe to drop the mics home on tobacco road sports radio, the YouTube channel. Uh, you mentioned Ryan Frick. We don't have to mention he's right. Cause he's really not. Uh, we'll have the cat cave up this afternoon as well as part of the keep pound podcast network as part of fans first sports network. Shan, we, we always, you know, list out a whole, you know, document of what we want to talk about, and then we never finish it up. Maybe, maybe we'll eventually get to these other topics uh, another day. time um, or get or get another hour or drop the mic. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. Shan, you're always awesome. Thank you so much for dropping by. Drop the mic. Man, no problem. Thanks for having me, man. 
Of course, again, tune into Out of Pocket with Michael Davis at 4 live this Friday on the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel. We're also on WWBG 1470 AM. Don't forget to subscribe to the Tobacco Road Sports Radio's YouTube channel where it's Drop the Mic, Cat Cave, Out of Pocket, all the things. And whatever you do, don't drop the mic. We will see you all next week. Shout out to Mike's throat for not going out.